2024 is nearly over, but we've got one last surprise sitting underneath our Christmas tree. For our final teardown of the year, we're taking a look at Hasbro's Furby, one of the most gifted animatronic toys of the year, to see whether this adorable little Ewok is repairable. <laughs> And while it sure is cute, let me just warn you, this teardown is borderline disturbing. And if you have an aversion to seeing cute things torn to shreds, run away fast. I will say the design could have gone through a few more rounds of stress testing, as I could probably find a dozen more ways to break this thing right off the bat. But we've got a teardown to get to. First things first, we're going to load this Furby into Luma Field's Neptune CT scanner to see what makes it tick. Children, avert your eyes. Under x-rays, our Ewok looks more like a cross between a gremlin and a Powerpuff girl. I can make out what looks like a 50s style speaker grill on the touch activated belly, and this particular Ewok looks to have had a metal plate inserted after some cranial surgery. Jokes aside, both these points are touch activated, and I'm curious to see how the mechanisms work. Otherwise, the internals appear to be pretty simple and loaded with screws. I'm going to start with the most visible screws on the bottom, which releases the battery hatch. Furby doesn't seem to mind as I look for the most efficient way of skinning the beast. These toys are soft and cuddly, which means all that material needs to be washable when it eventually gets dirty. These four screws allow me to remove a bracket that at first glance appears to release Furby's coat, but all it does is get my hopes up for nothing. There's no clear way to remove the Furby skin, so I'm pulling the plug on Furby and removing the hidden screw underneath one of the batteries. Unfortunately, that does nothing to get me any closer to a Furby pelt. At this point, I feel compelled to explicitly state this is not a repair guide. Do not repeat these steps unless you're ready to destroy your Furby. The coat is stitched into plastic brackets that don't want to come out, and as I cut away the stitching on each side, I realize that the bracket has a push-tab release mechanism. Now this isn't much of a solution. I used the thinnest bit I could find in my Mako driver kit to try to undo those tabs, but met with very little success. No matter, there's more than one way to skin a Furby. This push-tab design really is terrible. There's a dozen ways they could have done this. Elastic bands, Velcro, even snap fasteners. All would have done the job and made this a non-destructive process. Even if the tabs were easy to remove, this section would not be. The coat is sandwiched between the plastic eyes and the plastic body. Were I patient, I'd dismantle the device to remove the coat, but we're already well beyond what I'd consider a reasonable disassembly, so I'm cutting this last section out. Sheesh, that was hard work, so Furby and I are stopping for a little snack break. Yum yum. Alright, enough of that. Let's get into the device proper. A few more screws are all that's holding this device together, and pushing aside the metal skull cap releases both front and back shells. It's a tad shocking, but Furby still looks pretty cute, even in this state. I clearly have more work to do. The ears are next. These appear to be controlled by a single central motor that's moving the feet, ears, and eyes through a series of gears. A set of wires lead up to the LED lights at the base of each ear. There's a few of them, but none are soldered to the mainboard. This is good news so far as repairability is concerned, assuming you can get this far into the device. Two screws on the front and back release the beak section in the eyes, allowing me to remove both. Backtracking quickly to check my work, and yep, it's still alive. I love the aesthetic of this speaker grill, but it isn't made this way without reason. This metal plate is also capacitive. And last but not least, we can remove Furby's brains from its belly to finalize our little dissection. There is no doubt that Furby is a cute little toy, and it'll probably bring joy to many children that haven't already been scarred by this teardown. The interior electronics avoid soldering where possible, a great design choice that was probably made to increase modularity and ease of assembly rather than with any repair consideration in mind. And the fact that the coat is so difficult to remove is proof of this. This is reinforced in Hasbro's product description, stating that the device is surface clean only. As far as I can tell, Hasbro doesn't sell replacement parts for its Furby devices, and toys like this remain in the throwaway and replace category of electronics. And that's very unfortunate for the many people to which these toys hold great sentimental value, but very few options in terms of repair. If you do find yourself owning one of these Powerpuff Gremlins, take extra care to prevent any damage to the coat or electronics. Otherwise, you're gonna have a heck of a time fixing this one. Freddy not feel so good. 